Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. Should we put a medal around the S&P 500's neck and say, good day, good day, good day? Or is it only since March? Or is it, this is the biggest correction we've had in many, I'm not going to say many years, because we had a we had a pretty interesting 2020 with COVID in the stock market. But we had a big pullback. September and October have been less friendly than the rest of the year. So S&P 500, it's best day since March after four major U.S. banks. Uh, and that includes Wells Fargo. And Wells Fargo is one of the interesting ones because they kind of got into a lot of trouble. Remember? They started opening up credit cards. Or you would go home. And you'd go, I just deposited my paycheck at Wells Fargo. And you'd go home and you're like, what? Wells Fargo just gave me a credit card? So they were opening up fake accounts. And hmm, Congress didn't like that. Especially when you start bonusing people for opening accounts. It seems to me that what Facebook is doing to teenage girls is way worse than what Wells Fargo did to consumers. But call me, call me cray cray. So Wells Fargo had meaty fat earnings, a sign of a healthy economy. When banks do well, it's a sign of a good economy. And that's why when banks kick off earnings season, and they do it every time, earnings season's locked in stone. First week is the are the financials and some healthcare companies and some like some retail like healthcare retail. Next week will be big tech, and that's when it gets interesting. But the economy looks okay. Higher interest rates help banks. Loans that are not defaulting help banks. There's some positives to find in this. Walgreens had a big up day. They revealed a plan that's focused on the future of healthcare. It wasn't Apple. It wasn't Google. It wasn't Microsoft. Somebody else said, we're going to tackle healthcare in the future. It's worthy of note. State of Vax. Roughly two-thirds of the U.S. population have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. 8.9 million have received a Pfizer or Moderna uh, booster. Okay, so two-thirds of the population, but 8.9 have received the booster. Again, as we go through cycle after cycle, variant after variant, and I like to think of COVID-19 as a nasty, nasty flu that can kill you. Depending on how hard it hits you, it's like a wave in the ocean. We don't know. We've seen 10-year-old children die. We've seen healthy people die. So you can't be Joe Rogan stupid. Patent pending. Don't be Joe Rogan stupid and say, I'm healthy. I'll be okay. Pfizer could soon get, how shall we say, um, a little more love. 23 days after the federal government approved the booster shot, Pfizer will get a little bit more company. They'll get some more players. The FDA recommended a 50 microgram dose of Moderna vaccine for use as a booster. It's going to be available to the same eligibility groups as the Pfizer shot. The same panel yesterday um, is going to meet today, and they're going to look at Johnson Johnson's booster shot. It's not a home run, but experts still anticipate authorization given the single dose's lower effectiveness. <laughs> you know, I always tell you I have bad luck. I got the Johnson Johnson shot because I was like, it's a one and done. Sooner or better, because I'm going to be the guy who gets the the one shot, wait two weeks, get the second shot, wait, die in between, right? But I got the least effective one, so I'm kind of excited I'll give you the booster. Not like excited like Christmas. Like, I'm not coming down the stairs all happy, but you get the idea. There's one last place in China to give kudos to your coworker on their one-year anniversary. You know when you get that email and it says, or that pop-up message in your phone that says, hey, congratulate Rob on his two-year work anniversary. Microsoft's owned LinkedIn was one of the few U.S. internet companies to still have a presence in China, and now they basically are shutting it down. 
It's a significantly more challenging operating environment and greater compliance requirements. Um, China doesn't want you saying nice things to the coworkers, <laughs> for lack of a put it another way. China's saying no to Microsoft. You cannot curate the content enough. There's too much posting by individuals. You're done. Domino's is in the news. I like Domino's as a stock because it's something you know. It's something I know. It's something we know. Pizza delivery. Do you remember when Domino's ad campaign was avoid the noid? And they promised that they would deliver you a pizza in 30 minutes or less. Or it was free. Whoa. And then someone got run over. And the government's like, uh, you can't be rushing drivers to people's house for a free pizza. And then they gave $3 off. And that whole thing's kind of fallen away, right? But that's where they, they made their bread and butter. Their same store sales fell 1.9%. This is interesting in large part because it's been a big COVID play. The hand-tossed king did gangbusters last year as diners stayed home and ordered in. And Domino's had just a great campaign. They showed you commercials where like, hey, once your pizza goes in the oven, we never touch it again. Look, we slide it in the box and we cut it and we put a sticker around the box. It's never touched by us. Now, what's interesting about Domino's is they blame three things. Ready? Number one, a shortage of workers. That is becoming clearer and clearer and clearer a major problem across the United States, not just in healthcare with nurses, not just in hospitality at hotels and restaurants. You're seeing it everywhere. It's a very interesting trend. August had the most number of quitters. Can't drink all day if you... <laughs> Don't start in the morning. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Alcoholic Anonymous is for quitters, right? Is there anything else that I can throw out right now? But you get a shortage of workers. You get um, consumers drying up. And you get more restaurants opening up. Domino's CEO is going to ask drivers to fulfill more orders on the same route. I don't see why drivers should ever have to get out of their car. That doesn't make much sense as a quote. Headwinds here. Some COVID trends are reverting to pre-lockdown norms. While the fall is typically most pizza chains' strongest time, think NFL Sunday. There's a good reason why when you turn on Fox or CBS or ESPN to watch football on Sundays, da -da 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 -da, you see a lot of pizza commercials. Why? Because people like pizza and football go hand in hand. 30% of U.S. diners said in September they'd be ordering delivery less going forward. I agree with that. Um, I bet my DoorDash starts to dry up a little bit on a year-over-year -year comparison. I wouldn't want to be that stock. Domino's is telling us something. Now, Domino's is coming from a position of strength, and this is weird to talk about. We're talking about Pete's delivery as a strong investment idea. But... It's for real. Brought to you by EP Wealth. This is the Rob Black Show. Invest in what is really important. Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. Are you concerned with financial planning, tax planning, managing your investments, or just planning your retirement? Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, EP has your financial future in mind. Learn more by visiting robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. If you have a pool that you heat, if you have a house that you warm, you live in the northeast of the United States where it gets bitterly cold. You're like, uh-oh, winter's coming, and he just said natural gas prices are high. Yeah, fall's okay. You could kind of get away with a sweater, but we're a couple months away from pumping up the heat. Pump up the gas, girl. Pump it up. Blue flame. The U.S. households that use natural gas to heat their homes should expect to pay an average 30% more. That'll be interesting. You know how we talk about the consumer, about how Americans didn't really spend in 2020, 2021, 
we still feel a little hesitant to fly. Although it's starting to open up. I went to a baseball game last night. Saturday, I'm going to go to a concert. I'm going to wear a mask the whole time. I'm going to use the um, hand protection sanitizer. I'm going to do everything I can, being that I'm vaccinated. But it's starting to open up. But winter's coming. Now, here's the weird where you get kind of weird. Let me play the part of, of Tucker Carlson. Well, it won't be that bad since global warming's so awful that it's heating up the planet, right? Oh, Robert. <laughs> I don't like Tucker Carlson. I don't like the way he asks stupid questions. There's stupid questions. There's no longer just stupid people. There's stupid people and stupid questions. And even if global warming is warming the planet, it's still going to be a cold winter. Throwing that out there for you. Um, so it's to be cold and then it's a natural gas story between you and me. Elon Musk said his satellite internet service Starlink is talking to airlines about using it for high speed Wi-Fi on flights. That's kind of interesting because it's really, it's good Wi-Fi. But the way it's set up right now is you have to have an individual dish. It'll be interesting to see how he pulls this off because again, give him credit. He comes up with wackadoodle ideas that actually come true. The McPlant Burger is coming to some McDonald's locations next month. We talked about that yesterday. Banksy's self-destructed painting sold for more than $25.4 million at auction. The biggest sale ever for the artist. Banksy's an interesting street artist. I do like him. And there's a weird little documentary on him. I think it's on the Amazon. It could be on the Netflix streaming service. Girl with a balloon, you've probably seen. Love in a bin. Um, he's getting more and more popular. What's interesting about that is it's street art. One of my friends in, on the planet, I know you're saying, you have friends? Not really. I call them people I work with. One of the people I've worked with in the past, a general manager in television, uh, woke up one day and he went to a street market. You know, a little uh, mom and pop kind of go grab six pack of beer, go grab ketchup. If you have need one ingredient kind of thing, it's that kind of store. Maybe grab a donut in the morning. And Banksy had painted on the side of this guy's wall. And the, uh, the owner of the cafe of the street market was, like, was getting ready to paint over it. And my friend said, no, 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 no. Let me give you a million dollars for that. It wasn't a million. It was like 100000 so he basically commissioned some people to come take it off the side of the wall, and he repurposed it into his own art. Very, very wise move. So if you don't know the artist Banksy, it's 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 all that in a bucket of chicken. Check it out. It's unique. I'm not going to say special, but I'm going to say unique. Goldman Sachs crushes analyst expectations on strong investment banking and trading results. Retail sales unexpectedly gain in September as consumers keep spending. Yeah, they, I think I said a little bit of that. Like, I went to a con, I went to a baseball game. I'm going to go to a concert. I really debated not going to the concert, but in the end, uh, Rox's paper kind of won. Consumers spent as much as they could at a much faster rate than expected in September, defying expectations for a pullback. We keep hearing about a supply chain problem, but we're, we're finding things to spend on. Now, again, a lot of stuff is costing more, like cars. The increase came during a month when the government ended the enhanced benefits uh, that were enacted during the COVID-19 pandemic for joblessness and stay-at-homeness. Is that a word? Homeness? Stay-at-homeness? Students heading back to school, workers returning to the office were probably the catalyst for Oh, I don't quite fit in my pants anymore. <laughs> and man, I need a new backpack. My son has a crush on a f friend right now at school. And let's just say his clothing game has gone up a notch. During the pandemic, not so much. In real life, a little bit more. Food and beverage spending increased. Restaurants and bars saw a gain of just three-tenths of a percent, a sign that fears of the virus may have kept some people home. Food and drinking is up 29.5% over last year. So retail is telling us a lot. 
again, you don't have to be a stock detective to go, what's happening in the world? It's pretty obvious to me. Virgin Galactic stock plunged. Um, wait, wait, Virgin Galactic, didn't they get a little bit of a halo effect from this week's Captain Kirk, who, let's just say, won too many plastic surgeries, right? There's something weird about his big orange pumpkin head. It's too round. It's weird. But Virgin Galactic plunged in trading after the company said it would delay any space flights to next year. The space tourism company is beginning a refurbishment process on its vehicles. It expects it to take eight to ten months. Now, again, wait, 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 wait. Your only job is to take people up into space, give them a couple minutes up there, and bring them back down. And space is even argued because it's not orbiting. It's just a rocket-propelled plane. Okay, so I would do I would do everything I can to stay away from Virgin Galactic as a stock. The idea of spending two hundred fifty thousand dollars to go on a bus into space for ten minutes is cute, but there's no long term recurring revenue there. There's no plan to do um, satellites. Like, hey, let's dump a satellite up out it while we're up here. <clears throat> there's no cargo. SpaceX with Elon Musk is genius. Don't miss an episode of The Rob Black Show. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. I try to focus the show on your retirement. You need a nest egg. I start very simple. I build off of it. Can you, how much do you need? One to four million dollars per person. If you're single, maybe you need closer to one million. If you have a wife and kids, maybe you need closer to four million. Four million should pay you close to roughly anywhere between one hundred and twenty to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year till the day you die. I bring that up because inflation's out there. You maybe want to add a little bit more to the kitty. Maybe you want to work a little bit longer before you start drawing on things. There's a lot of forces out there. The force is with you, young Skywalker. The era of trading a long career for a pension is gone. Do you remember being a child and hearing someone got a gold watch at retirement? And that they're going to spend their retirement playing golf? That's over. Golf is expensive. There's a lot of financial pressures everywhere you go. There's a looming crisis in Social Security and Medicare. <clears throat> the imbalances that you're likely to face is you're going to trade a decent income for what you have in retirement savings, and that better be a good teeter-totter. Not the type where the jerk kid gets off at the bottom and sends it plunging to the ground. You don't want that. You kind of want your working years to slowly go up while your retirement years slowly comes down and you meet halfway and you get off. Americans in their 50s have on average $203,600 stashed away in their 401ks. 203000 is not enough. If Social Security is going to give you 18000 pre-tax, let's call it 12000 after taxes, there's going to be state income taxes. There's going to be sales taxes. 203000 dollars goes fast. Average car is forty one thousand. I think I said earlier this week. So you need one new car, and that's twenty percent of your retirement, your supplemental, and your four hundred one k. If you get a new car, I'm not a new car kind of guy, and I'm driving a lot less than I have in the years past. So I'm more open to the idea of having a golf cart. I know you're saying you're kidding, right? Kinda. Um, talking about retirement in the 2020s, older workers value flexibility. They don't want a traditional nine to five job with a hassle of commuting. They're willing to give up some salary to achieve it. Um, just make sure you're keeping an eye on the retirement while you're keeping the eye on the remote working. For me, as I cruise towards retirement, 
I've had two very expensive outings. One is going to be last night's baseball game, and one's going to be the weekend's concert. Um, I need to make sure that fits into my budget because I kind of like doing things like that. A little bit of spontaneity on live events. Um, and I haven't had that. I've had discipline in the last year and a half. Now I'm losing the discipline. Social Security is expected to run short of money in 2034. I don't look at Social Security as a safety net for me. CFP Chad Burton doesn't look at Social Security as a safety net for any of his clients. He sees it as maybe it'll cover your health care cost, if you're lucky. Your Medicare premiums. That's it. <clears throat> you pay for your own health care in retirement. Medicare isn't free. When I was a child, I thought Medicare was free. But as I grew, I quickly learned, nope. Younger generations um, will become older generations. Younger generations will become younger generation of retirees, and the, also they get retirees become the older generation of retirees. And we'll become bitter at our parents for how good of a system they got versus what we got. Throwing that down there for you. Our hope is that somehow, some way, some shape, some form, that the healthcare system really embraces technology and keeps costs down going forward. But they haven't been kept down ever. Healthcare costs are rampant. They're like college costs. If I was a congressman, and I'm not a congressman, vote Rob Black, um, I, I would look at the college, these nonprofits. Why are they raising college tuition 6% on average a year? Why? Is it the professors? Is it, What is it? Is it the parking lot? Is it the football stadiums? Colleges should be about training kids to become citizens. Yes, they should be research centers. Colleges should be about training kids to be adults because some parents don't want to be the parent. But 6% increases a year is a little bit too much. Then in retirement, we're also going to have to deal with climate change. The Real Estate Association of Brokers talked about how people are now looking at their home and where does it fit in the environment with wildfires, droughts, hurricanes, and floods. Do you remember when you just bought a home because it had a sturdy foundation? God, it's a sturdy home. I could raise a family here. Um, those days are over. The pandemic has given us a good preview of how climate change is going to impact us. Climate changes and the pandemic, we saw grocery prices soar from disruptions in the food supply chain. Imagine what prices will be like when water emergencies are declared and we have to decide if we're going to make bread or baskets of fruit. California and seven prairie states are facing threats from drought. California makes a lot of the fruit in the United States. And the drought is a problem. Again, in retirement, <clears throat> you're still going to have to face these issues. Um, CFP Chad Burton comes on the show and we talk sometimes about, I remember when we were a kid, we talked about taking your age and subtracting it from 120. That's how, what percentage you should own in stocks versus bonds. It's a stupid rule because we're all different. It's a rule of thumb. The rule of thumb comes from a judge back in old England basically saying you're allowed to hit your wife, but if it's bigger than your thumb with a stick, you're not allowed to hit your wife with a stick. And you're like, what? <laughs> What's going on here? Now, I don't like rule of thumbs. I don't even like that rule of thumb. <clears throat> Keep in mind, I was battered as a child. I know you're saying, oh, no, he's going to go on a long story about his dad and alcohol. No, no, I was battered. We were never fried, but my dad rolled us into egg and flour and got us all battered with breadcrumbs and stuff on us. Dun, dun, dun. There's a new rule of thumb in my mind. Probably let's expect higher inflation. So when I used to start the segment and said, you're going to need somewhere between 1 and 4 million, maybe I should change it to, you're going to need somewhere between 1.5 million and 5 million. Or six million on the high end. I just know that in the last eighteen months, 
I've seen really high inflation. Used car prices, new car prices, food. Restaurants are throwing in extra taxes, which is inflating the cost of the bill. Saying, we need to pay employees more, so you're going to pay more for your burger. Sometimes they're slipping into the bill as an extra line. Sometimes they're just at, uh, upping the cost of the burger. Hamburger. A very American food. Hamburger. Europe looks at us and they're like, gosh, you really like the supersized whoppers. Whoopers. <clears throat> so I'm expecting more inflation in retirement. Are you? I'd rather be wrong than ignorant. Just throwing it down there for you. I will not meet you at the trailer park in retirement. I refuse. A couple things I want in retirement. I don't want to live in a trailer park, and I want to have my own teeth. Don't want dentures. I know you're saying, that that's what drives you? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I like to shop for bargains. I'm cool with that. I hope you do, too. This is going to be an interesting year because, again, with all the inflation, with all the supply chain problems we have, there's not going to be a lot of deals to be had. So think about it now. I don't mind coupons. Um, what I don't like are coupons that you would never buy that product in the first place, but it's a coupon and you're like, oh, I should do it. Planning to travel during the pandemic, take advantage of historically low prices on airfare and hotel packages. There's a lot of really good websites out there to shop travel. And it's surreal, isn't it? Like you and your spouse can shop for travel. One of you will come back with a trip to Hawaii for $5,000. One of them will come back with a trip to Hawaii for $7,000. And $2,000 is a lot of money. There's a website called Scott's Cheap Flights. They'll send you email alerts when airfare deals based on your search parameters become available. Kayak.com, I still like. You can search for travel deals by plane or train, as well as rental cars and hotel packages. Google Travel allows you to search average airfare and hotel prices and much, much more on an interactive map. Aggregate and vacation rental prices for you as well. What's really interesting about that statement is I have not thought about travel or kayak.com or Scott's Cheap Flights in 18 months. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com. Businesses are bracing for Biden's COVID vaccine mandates as Republicans threaten lawsuits. More than 130,000 businesses across the United States are bracing for the Biden administration's rules on COVID vaccinations and testing. I think if you're going to go out in public, you shouldn't be allowed to say, it's my body. If you're going to stay in your house, it's your body. I get it. Totally, that's where I draw the line. You're going to draw the line somewhere else. We're all going to draw the line somewhere else. But nearly every Republican state attorney general in the United States signed a letter to the president last month vowing to challenge the requirements. That's how split we are. It doesn't even matter if you – it's like Republicans versus Democrats. I don't like it. That's just me though. Let's talk about some of the stories of money that we're seeing out there today and is there anything to be learning from this whole process. Retail sales unexpectedly rose. The story that I want you to see there is I've already talked about this once on some of the inside sectors that are doing well in retail. But let's throw this down again. Americans spend money. We don't always live paycheck to paycheck, but essentially we live paycheck to paycheck. Retail sales for the month increased seven-tenths of percent. You kind of have to exclude auto sales right now because the supply chain is so messed up in autos. You're not going to the the dealership this weekend and saying, well, I really like that that car, but you're going to have to take $3,000 off the sticker. They're like, goodbye. Next, full price. Students and workers heading back, had the normal students and workers heading back kind of the issues. We need new clothes. Whether it's for back to school or back to work. 
But really the story I want to say one last time that I'll drop retail is something along the lines of we're going to spend money. So that's one of the reasons I like capitalism. I don't like the way China does communism where mm, they decide a little later, maybe the rich need to give to the poor. Maybe the poor need to work more hours. I, I don't like it. It's too tough for me to predict on the spending patterns. But the haves are going to spend, the have-nots are going to spend in the United States. It's more important that we have our cell phones and our cable TV than it is that we save money for retirement. Theranos hired its president's dermatologist as a lab director in 2014. Some of the stories coming out of Theranos right now are pretty fascinating. And let's just put it this way. Elizabeth Holmes doesn't look as glamorous as she did when she was a billionaire. She's still a billionaire on paper. But when she was coming up with a Stanford breakthrough technology that was going to change the world of healthcare with a blood test. Now the lawyers are starting to show us what really was going on there. A dermatologist was brought on to be a company president. Worse yet, it was a dermatologist of one of the co-founders. And it just doesn't sound right, does it? I'm not saying, I think in the world of doctors, dermatologists are a little bit lower than like cancer doctors, oncologists. I'm not, I'm not being mean. I'm not being mean. Just work with me here for a second. I once dated a woman who worked for a dentist and he hated um, checkups where he, Basically, you have to scrape plaque off someone's teeth, but he loved the cosmetic side, the Beverly Hills side of giving people fake teeth. But he thought people who scraped plaque were beneath him. Right? Are you with me? So Therano is having a dermatologist on a company that's doing blood screening for cancers. Seems a little bit weird. And when the court shows this to us, it's, it's not quite the drama of O.J., if the glove fits, does it not fit? Uh, what was it that uh, Norm Macdonald once said when they showed the gloves at the trial and OJ blurred it out? Give me back my murdering gloves. <laughs> nope, he didn't say that. <laughs> my murdering gloves. Wasn't the OJ time kind of interesting? Do you remember where you were when the white Bronco was shown on TV? I do. I was at a concert, 11 o'clock on the East Coast, waiting for the concert to start. A little bit disgruntled because I like how my shows start a little bit early. I like leaving a little bit earlier. But bars on the East Coast stay open until 2, so bands don't start typically until maybe 11.30. Anyway, former President Bill Clinton admitted to a hospital with non-COVID-related infection. We all are going to die. 16 million people 65 and older will be in the workforce by 2030. Um, what's interesting to predict about the future workforce is where it's going to be. Typically, if you buy real estate where jobs are going, you do pretty well. The number of older workers in the labor force is expected to swell over the next decade. By 2030, there will be 16.1 million workers 65 and older. We're staying in the workforce longer. How's your health? Right now, there's about 10.6 million workers in America working over 65. By 2030, that'll be about 60% higher to 16.1 million. Wyoming, South Dakota, Alaska, Washington State, and Vermont are the top five best states for older workers, according to a new survey. Kentucky, West Virginia, Alabama, New Mexico, and Arkansas are the bottom five. All the best ranking states basically don't levy a state income tax. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com.